What's up everybody? I'm Z Wade, the Z Wade and Z Wade Photo, and we're back with an old style of video. Well, it's old at this point. And today I might surprise you with what I bought <laughs> and what I'm showing you today, but I promise there's an explanation. Before I tear open the box, I want to say I am super appreciative of everybody that keeps coming back to watch my content. According to YouTube Analytics, 88% of the viewers that come back are not subscribed. And so if you do find this content helpful, informative, or at the very least, entertaining, I hope you will consider subscribing. Chin up for me, please. A Little bit to the left. Eyebrows up. Got it. Well, here we go. This big old box. What in the world could be in here? Well, let me show you. Oh my gosh, Zach, why? We knew that you loved older lenses, but what is the deal with old cameras now? Well, first of all, it's not that dang old. In an age of mirrorless cameras, why in the hell am I showing a D7 AD? Well, there are two reasons. One of practicality and I suppose spiritual. Today we will focus on the practical because it's actually less important to me. So without wasting any more time, let's just dive in. Now in this video, I'm not going to bore you with the specs because this camera has been out for two years. And I mean, there's just hundreds of videos, I'm sure on the specs of this camera. But what is most important to me is actually how similar it is to the Z6. I'm just going to focus on the things that matter to me. It doesn't really matter what matters to you. You know, this has a specific use for me. We've got the original packaging. Let's see what's in here. Wow, they have all of the original cables and the original uh, uh, camera strap here, which we don't use, but it's nice to have it if I ever want to part with this. We have the silly charger, which they shipped with the cable in there. I don't like that. That would be easy to bend the prongs. That's irresponsible. And now we get to the fun stuff. And they shipped it with the battery in it. Again, very irresponsible. It shares the same sensor as the Z6 and thus should have the same output. Now the Z6 did have issues, which is much better now with firmware, but output was never the issue. The only issue I ever had with the Z6 being in single point autofocus user was the fact that it had one card slot because at that time I was shooting a lot of professional work. In 2022, I have sworn off all professional work and I only want to do what I want to do. So one card slot for a portrait shoot with a model, it's not as detrimental as not having that backup. The second reason why this is a good buy for me is the video. This has the best video of any DSLR that Nikon ever made. It will shoot 4K frames per second. I don't know off the top of my head, but the thing is being a content creator for YouTube, you can never have too many cameras and you really never have enough. Currently you see camera one and camera two, and that's all fine and dandy, but the ZFC actually isn't cutting it for me. I find it really annoying that, you know, I have that crop factor. So if I put on a 40 millimeter lens, it's actually kind of too much. And I have a 28 millimeter, which is kind of, you know, it would be perfect in this scenario, but it's, it's not, it's got the 1.5 crop factor. And if I put the 14 to 24 on there, that's just a bit, you know, I, I'm just tired of the crop factor. Okay. I'm not going to go into a rant. And so this will likely take the main place as camera two. And the ZFC will just be camera three. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but I will find a use for it. That's the beauty of having a lot of cameras as a content creator. The next reason is F-mount. I've never really been a fan of adapting and focus peaking is good on the Z system with native glass, but I feel like F-mount glass, I feel it, maybe it's shifted, or maybe I'm just a total failure when it comes to manual focusing adapted glass. But I always find that the Z glass works great with the focus peaking and the F mount lenses are kind of hit and miss. I didn't have that problem with the D4S 
that I actually had before this that was kind of a dud, it seemed to be spot on using the old system of manual focusing, which I liked, which you had the dot and then you had the arrows that told you which way to go. It's always spot on, right? This was before focus peaking. I like that. I feel like it works a little bit better than the focus peaking. I have a hard time seeing it. And so I get to use all my old manual focuses natively now. Natively, with the benefit of this having Z6 and Z6 II output, which I love the output of Nikon's mirrorless system, like a lot. The next reason is I, I got a good deal on this. This camera launched at, I think, $2,500. And I got this with a really low shutter count. This has less than 50,000 for the price of a Z6 II used or maybe a little more than a Z6. Now I was getting close to ordering a Z5 or a Z6 just to be camera number two to replace the ZFC as camera number two. And I, I didn't do that because I saw this and this will give me that 4K. It will fill the void of the, of the second camera and it will also let me use all these old lenses that I really love. And I'll get into that deeper in a different video of why I, I have so much interest in these older lenses. But for today, we're just gonna keep focusing on the D780. The second to last reason, these are not in order, that I got this is for YouTube content creation. I want to be able to appeal to a bigger audience and there's no denying that DSLRs are gaining popularity right now in the consumer space, not the YouTube space, but the consumer space. And as time goes on, even though DSLRs and F-mount lenses are elevated in price right now, they are going to fall. And when that does, these high quality used products are going to be available to a bigger audience than they ever have been. People that have never been able to afford to get into photography are going to be able to afford to get into photography with really, really good stuff. And you know what? I love this old, well, kind of old stuff. This isn't old, but DSLRs are becoming quote unquote old, right? And nothing compares to mirrorless. That's hogwash. And I'm going to be here to provide great and honest advice to the next generation of photographers that are coming on YouTube, just like I once did, trying to learn and trying to find some guidance. I'm going to be there. The first step in any used product is the sniff test. No, not the Afro sniff test. That's just silly. This is a real sniff test. And what we're looking for is we're looking for smoke, tobacco smoke. Not only does this like look almost brand new, but it actually smells <laughs> brand new. It still smells like the plasticky rubber factory new smell. I smell no tobacco smoke, so I don't have to send this back today. If you ever do buy something and it smells like smoke, it's better to just send it back and get a replacement, right? Because that can cause problems. Now, I suppose it's time to take a few shots. And so let's go do that. I'll see you in Lightroom. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. I apologize for cutting off part of the sidebars. I, there's some information that I'm trying to keep a secret, such as, you know, the lenses that I used for this. And so I have videos coming up on them. And so we'll just call this the mystery lens. I don't even want to give away the focal link because you'll guess it. So, as you can see, it's an older lens. We got some aberration. But the file itself looks very nice. Nice detail out of this uh, sensor. We're not going to play around with these a lot, but good rendering. These are mostly going to be of lolly, so I'll jump around with these. Um, this particular sensor seems like it's a little more green. The green is a little bit different than the Z6 II, but it could just be what the white balance was. It was not on auto white balance, which is what I generally shoot. It was on 55 or 5880. Whoever had it before me had it set on that, but uh, it's very similar. These, of course, will look different because we're not using Z glass and Z glass is pretty much optical perfection, uh, lacking slightly in character. And not all of these are going to be sharp. I weeded out the ones that I missed totally. But some of them are just too cute. <laughs> and we have a series of real cute <laughs> coming up here. Now this is absolutely sharp. Excellent. Um, like I said, we're going to jump jump around in these. I just wanted to show that um, the sensor itself is very nice. 
this one not incredibly sharp she moved on me but um totally adorable this one is insanely sharp so that's good this one here also insanely sharp so that's good maybe let's uh let's do a little something with this one real quick oops bring that highlight down just a tad looks pretty good what's the little vignette in there yep. I mean you, you can tell that the sensors are cut from the same cloth they're they're both high quality the colors are just a little different I feel but the, you could tell that they're they're from like around the same year it's a very modern render let's just do previous on that this lens is really good in black and white I'm excited to show this one to you guys it's rather legendary. This one here is not sharp in the face at all. It's wickedly sharp in here, but I just thought this was really funny. And I believe here pretty quick, this is the last mystery lens. And nope, nope, this one is. And uh, we just nailed that one. I don't consider myself much of a uh, wildlife photographer, but we got it. We got it hanging out of the, uh, the truck window. The Ford effing Ranger. <laughs> okay, now we're going to switch to a uh, Mystery 50. This is a Mystery 50 lens. And um, it is a 1.4. And, and I will mention that this lens is notably not sharp at f1.4, but it has a beautiful character at 1.4. See how it's just kind of glowy all over? It looks really, really nice whenever you do some, um, some work to them. Very artistic at um f1.4 but we are going to stop it down because we're supposed to be <clears throat> excuse me checking out the camera not the lens but you can see it's it's rather pretty cool lens I, I can't wait to show that one to you guys as well nice detail this is at 3.5 on that particular lens and see what I mean? Uh, the, the greens are just a little um, different. This is going directly into the sun, so it should be a little funky. But um, I mean, it's easily fixable. You can just pull back the greens. Pull back the yellows, and it'll look really identical. So the sensors are close enough that you can do almost nothing and get them looking the exact same, even with the difference between the Z-glass and F-mount glass some f-mount glass pretty much all z glass is awesome but f-mount is hit and miss i have a video coming up uh, about that it's actually one of the things that's intriguing about um older optics i mean that's wickedly sharp but anyway so yeah i'm i'm really happy with the output of this um i will definitely have more coming up than just lolly this is just what i had today at the making of this video and so we will see portraits, we will see cityscapes and landscapes and everything else that I shoot with the D780. But for now, I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade, and Z-Wade Photo, and I will catch you in the next one.